Hello, Christian McDonald here from the PFSense software development team here at NetGate. The next release of PFSense Plus software, version 2403, will introduce powerful new capabilities to system startup and system update, making the process faster and more reliable. Traditionally, PFSense software was updated by first downloading and caching all upgrade packages while the system had WAN connectivity, and then completing the installation of these packages during the first reboot. We originally chose this approach because it's generally more reliable to update the system before services are ever started. However, this had one significant drawback. It was slow. This approach of deferring the expensive disk operations of package extraction and installation to the first reboot meant that the system remained offline for a significant period of time, much longer than it would be otherwise during a normal system reboot. Additionally, this period of time was noticeably longer on lower-end hardware, like the NetGate 1100 and 2100. We are leaning heavily on our past work integrating the ZFS file system and boot environments in PFSense Plus software. This new approach to system update starts by first creating and mounting a clone of the currently running boot environment. Next, we direct the package manager to upgrade packages in this offline cloned boot environment. If the upgrade was successful, we marked this offline cloned boot environment as being a temporary boot environment, which means PFSense will only boot into this environment once during the next reboot. All of this now occurs while the system remains online serving clients. And finally, we reboot the system. System Startup now implements a boot verification mechanism that automates the fallback and recovery of the system if the system fails to boot properly. This mechanism is utilized during every boot of the system. Now, when the system startup procedure is executed, a watchdog timer is started that simply reboots the system after a set period of time. The theory here is that a significant portion of boot failures that we see in the field result in the system hanging during startup. Now, if system startup hangs for any reason, the system will automatically select the best candidate boot environment and will try rebooting again. This process can continue automatically without any user intervention until all candidate boot environments are checked. Once we successfully reach the end of the startup procedure, we mark the temporary boot environment as being boot verified and we activate it permanently, making it the true next boot environment moving forward. However, if the startup procedure explicitly fails for any reason, we invoke the same boot environment selection process as before to pick the best candidate boot environment to try next. In order to de demonstrate these new capabilities, I've created two boot environments, one called good and another called bad. Now these two boot environments are almost identical. However, the bad boot environment has a bug in the PFSense startup procedure that makes it non-functional. So let's watch as the system attempts to boot into this bad boot environment. The system detects the boot failure and presents the user with a summary of the failed boot environment and the boot environment to be tried next. The user also has an option to break into a recovery shell for post-mortem analysis. After 60 seconds with no user interaction, the system automatically reboots and tries the next boot environment. Here, I will expedite this process by pressing any key to reboot immediately. The system has now booted back into the good boot environment. Let's log in and take a peek at the boot environments page. You can see that we're now back into the good boot environment and the bad boot environment has failed boot verification and can be deleted. This covers it for this sneak peek. 
Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more news, updates, and guides from NetGate. I'm Christian, and I'll see you next time.